Tara Galliano, and I'm with Boulder Sex Therapy, and I wanted to do another Facebook Live today. Now, I'm not sure about how the quality will be. My screen looks a little bit slow, but I'm going to continue with this today. So I wanted to talk a little bit about sex, intimacy, sexuality, after prostate cancer. So um, I wanted to talk about sex. So oftentimes people are coming in and asking, uh, what is sex? Or maybe they have an idea of what sex is, um, but the way I like to define it helps create a conversation that we're all understanding similar vocabulary terms. And so when I think about sex, I'm thinking about the behavior. I'm thinking it is what it is that we do. Um, it is the act. Oftentimes we reduce it simply to sexual intercourse. intercourse. And one of my tasks as a sex therapist is to make that definition of sex much more expansive. So to see it as a menu where there are many options of what sex actually is and not to narrow it down to one specific behavior or act. And another question that I often find people are curious about is what is sexuality? And so sexuality is the expression. It is, um, I'm just looking at my notes here, uh, the the quality or the state of being, or it's how we go about uh, achieving sexual pleasure, um, or it's our capacity for sexual experiences. And I would say that is what sexuality is, and it is really the state of, of being for us. And then another question that I get is what is intimacy? So intimacy is about closeness or familiarity or a connection, an emotional connection with another person. Oftentimes when we say intimacy, we mean that with our primary partner, with our spouse, with our significant other, with our husband, with our wife. But intimacy can really be something that we share with many different people. Oftentimes I think of the intimacy of holding a newborn baby and how precious that is. And when you gaze into that child's eyes uh, for the first time, if you're the parent of that child, how beautiful that is and how intimate that experience is. Um, and so I think that it's important to just understand that really the intimacy is about this emotional experience and that we can have that with many different people, but oftentimes we focus on our primary partner when we think about intimacy. And so my goal is to help people who have had cancer, prostate or testicular cancer in particular today that I'm talking about, uh, increase the intimacy in their relationship. Because what I find is that when we're able to have more capacity for intimacy in our relationships, then we're able to have more healing after cancer, and we're, we're able to have more pleasure in our body, and we're able to have more joy in our life. So I think that that's really an important feature of relationships that we have with other people um, that we forget, but particularly our primary partner, which oftentimes can be difficult. We're working out logistical pieces, we're dealing with daily life issues, with bills, with other hassles that come up in our daily life, and we also need to create that space where we're going to have the experience of being um, quiet and together and intimate. And, and not that all intimate need, experiences need to be quiet, um, but there can be a variety. Okay, so when men have had testicular or prostate cancer, they oftentimes need to know really what's what now what's going to happen to me now in terms of functionality they want to know if they're going to be able to have erections I think that's huge um, certainly a piece that we'll be covering in the class and they're dealing with the symptoms of their treatment or the cancer them itself um, and erectile dysfunction is an issue um, they're also concerned about the quality of the erection the duration of the erection um, whether there's urine leakage whether there's a change in their ability to have orgasm, whether they have a dry orgasm, um, whether they can have an orgasm without erection. Um, oftentimes they're considering also uh, if there's a change in the length of their penis or the curvature of their penis. Um, and, and what I find is that all of those are issues for the men and those are things that we need to address because it brings up a lot of insecurity, it brings up a lot of fear Think that we often get scared when we don't know what's going to happen and we're so used to our bodies functioning 
everything the way they have been in the past. And every day we're getting older, every day we're evolving, every day we're changing. Oh, I see I am frozen on the screen. Okay, I'm back. So I was saying every day we're aging, every day we're evolving, every day we're getting older. So nothing about our physical beings is static. We are dynamic. And, and so there needs to be some acceptance of our limitations or how we're changing as we grow. So I'm just trying to fix the lighting a bit. Sorry for these technical difficulties. I'm not in my regular location today, I changed locations for this Facebook Live. So another thing that we'll cover in the class that I wanted to mention briefly today is the use of sexual aids. Um, oftentimes men find that certain aids will help them with their functioning of maintaining and um, sustaining a, an erection. And so cock rings are often um, an important piece for men um, also. I see my face freezing. I'm sorry. Um, vacuums or vacuum devices which you would place over the penis to help it uh, receive the blood flow to engorge and to get an erection. Um, there's also penile implants which can be used after prostate or testicular cancer. Um, injections, pills, uh, interurethral suppositories, um, all of these things are aids that can help men with their functioning after testicular or prostate cancer. And what I'm primarily interested in and what I do in my work is I talk to people who've had testicular or prostate cancer and are in a couple or in a relationship or, or dating and they want to know more about their um, quality of a relationship. Will they be able to be sexual with their partner? And those are all pieces that I help cover and reassure those men that yes, this is an important piece of your life really. Sex is um, enlivening and it's such a vital component of our being. And I think that um, we oftentimes forget that, that we think that we can bypass that because things are good enough and why do we need that? But in Ayurveda, which is a ancient medicinal um, system from India, they say that the three pillars of life to have a really healthy, healing, successful, joyous life is sex and sleep and nutrition. So those three components are essential for a wonderful life. And I do believe that's true for us today as well. And so I'm, I'm helping people work on that sex piece. So what I help couples do is to communicate better and to look at their willingness and their creativity. Oftentimes I find that we need to get out of the box and to think about things differently. We need to really look at how we can be playful and imaginative. And I think oftentimes that's a struggle for couples who've been together for a long time a uh, couple of years, a couple of decades, and then things get into a habitual pattern and it's hard to get out of that pattern. It really takes a lot of effort to kind of change out of that and I think that that's what a sex therapist can do. A sex therapist can help you change the trajectory of your relationship from humdrum to mind-blowing because they're going to give you some ideas, some activities, some exercises that you can try on and kind of have that pointer or, or objective opinion um, that someone's giving you that's not in the relationship. Oftentimes in the relationship, again, because we're stuck in habitual patterns, a suggestion may come, but we don't hear it. Um, or someone may say something they'd like to do and then the other person doesn't want to do it. Or we don't even know how much they actually do want to do it. They just, it's just a suggestion and we blow it off. Um, but as a sex therapist, I help people engage in those deeper conversations so they can really have healing. And I think sexual healing is very important after prostate and testicular cancer because what we know about skin on skin contact um, is very enlivening for us is that healing 
it is, is so beneficial on so many levels. When, again, to, back to that baby as an example. When we hold babies in our arms and there's that skin on skin contact, so much is happening, so much information is being received by that infant. Um, and so much nurturing and so much bonding. And that's so true also with our partners. And I think after we've had a life-threatening illness, we don't want to put ourselves out there. Um, sometimes we feel shame. We are uncomfortable in our bodies and we don't know how we'll be received. And oftentimes there's an assumption too that because we've had a life-threatening illness that we're gonna be experiencing pain and that we don't wanna be touched. And really what needs to happen is that we need to touch each other. We need to connect physically. We need to connect emotionally. And it's so important that we do that. So I just wanted to say that I'm there for you if you've had testicular prostate cancer. And I'm going to cut this video a little bit shorter today. I had planned on speaking a little bit more, but I'm not really happy with the quality of my um, technical knowledge. And I, I feel like this is not um, quite what I had planned. So I really appreciate you watching this video. I'm so thankful for the people who watched my video last week. I got almost 100 views and that means so much to me. So I'm so grateful that you were able to watch my video. And please, if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. So send me an email, connect at the comment section, and I look forward to speaking with you.